Now we have a new segment this year, Inspirational Stories. And to kick it off, we have the People's Choice New Zealander of the Year, 18-year-old Nina Griffiths. Now, Nina lost close friends to suicide and decided to do something in her community to raise awareness and help the youth and have a place to go. Great to have you on the cafe. Nina, welcome. Thank you. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, really, really incredible story that you've got. And what a woman you are. I want to ask first, though, uh, People of the Year, uh, Person of the Year, or the, the People's Choice Award, you were up against people. People voted for you. And you were up against Liam Malone, the Paralympian, um, Chloe Swarbrick, who ran for Auckland Mayoralty, and also yeah. Julian Dennison, the actor. Uh, and you saw somebody that thought you thought you had no chance of winning, didn't you? I had a look at the first couple of entries and I thought, oh God, there's no way. But, you know, they were kittens crazy. involved with one there of them, there. And a house fire, so I thought, no, <laughs> no chance. Now, this has been a personal crusade for you. Congratulations um, for, for winning too, by the way. But this personal crusade for you, tell us, tell us about it. Um, I think suicide is a very personal thing for anyone. You don't have to personally, you know, don't have to be very close to them and lose someone very close to you for it to, to affect you. Um, it just happened to be a... Um, a very close friend of mine who was very special to me and um, and so it's very hard to think that this person has gone but you knew them very well and, and yet they're still gone yeah. so that's kind of hard to come to grips with but um, that's that motivated me to do something because nothing seemed to change after it happened and he was very important to me and, and a lot of the others that we lost were very important obviously to their friends and family and um, but nothing seemed to change, no one wanted to do anything different, and so that was the motivation. Because you mourn yeah. their loss, and it's obviously really yeah. upsetting, but you took the next step, which is so impressive, as just a young woman, and you did do things. What did you do? Oh, I have a big mouth, and I'm not, <laughs> af I'm not afraid to, to talk about things, and I think that um, this is definitely an issue that needs to be talked about um, in a positive way, and so uh, I called a community meeting and surprise, surprise, I sort of put it on the Kata Happenings page. I said, anyone who wants to talk about this, um, I've inv I invited Mike King to come and speak because um, I had a lot of respect for him and he's done really awesome um, stuff in our community before. And so I asked him to come up and surprise, surprise, he actually came up. And the second surprise was that a lot of our community turned up and obviously it's a huge issue and a lot of people were really into doing something positive. It was really cool. And to help you do something positive, you won a scholarship last year from AMP. They gave you $10,000, which you helped yeah. put towards a, a centre. Yeah, so um, working on a sustain finding and working on a sustainable model, so it's not just spending it for a temporary space, so it's, a sustain it's sustainable, uh, it's really, really tricky. But, yeah, I'm really grateful um, for AMP. They've actually supported me quite a lot to, um, so far. So it's about creating a youth space where young people can go and feel safe. And so it's still in the stages of development and making sure that, um, you know, it's the right thing. It's the right yeah. thing, well, it is the right thing. So what does it mean yeah. for the, the, the youth space, meant for the community? So in my mind, it's sort of a place where the community can connect again. Um, for the, in the far north, like Kaita has a lot of really diverse personalities, um, you know, people who just do amazing things that you would never expect. Um, and so we just don't know how diverse our community is until we come together and do something like that. So I think that a community youth space, um, supported by the community and led by young people, would be a really awesome way to, you know, you know, create interactions and make magic. So I just think that's really Do cool. you think we handle suicide wrong in this country? Because we're always told not to talk about it, I guess. Um, and you're doing something, I guess, completely opposite that seems to be working. Do you think we need to make some changes? Absolutely. And I think when you say talk about um, suicide, it doesn't have to be talking about methods or it doesn't have to be talking about anything like that because that's a negative kind of approach. And I think that the negative stigma that is around suicide is the problem, it's the attitude we have. So if we're positive about reaching out to those that do need help and um, sort of seeing it as not so much, um, oh, you know, what's wrong with you? It's, well, what's gonna make you feel better? So it's about, yeah, doing something positive and I think that there's definitely an attitude that needs to change and it's, it's a really hard one to go about it, but, you know. You've gotta do it. Yeah, and let's just absolutely. remember, you're 18 years old. Yeah. That's, just, that's so incredible that you're doing so much. So what is going to be next for you? You've done this much already. What's next for you? I have a, um, Mike, I've been doing quite a bit with um, Mike King and the Key to Life Charitable Trust. They've supported me a lot and they really, um, they do awesome work. And so I, we've got a project coming along that's really cool. But it's, it's about getting young people, getting youth voice out there and what we actually think because I think that we're not really heard enough as we should be.
Yeah. Well, and look, you're doing a fantastic job. So while you're here and people may be watching, what, what advice would you give if somebody was struggling? Um, okay, so I've, I've got a really, really thought about this. So I've, I've got a few things to say. So first of all, if you're a young person and, and you need help, you feel like you're struggling, you would be surprised as to who's going to respond when you do reach out. It, I, it surprised me when I've reached out. Um, so that's really important. Don't be afraid. Um, and if you get turned away once, don't, you know, there is someone who cares about you. Um, second of all, if you see someone who is in need of help or you think maybe, oh, they've been really quiet recently or, you know, I know that a lot of things have happened in their life which is quite sort of negative, maybe you can be the one to reach out. And don't be afraid to reach out because I think that that's really brave too. Um, even if it's just, hey, do you want to hang out? Um, you don't know what a difference that that's going to make for someone. I've learnt that myself. So. Yeah, I think that's really important, sense. actually, that thing that if you see someone you think they're struggling, they go, oh, somebody else will deal with it, it's OK. Yeah. Uh, you just go straight in there. Nina, it's been an absolute pleasure mm, having you you're here. You're incredible. Um, I'm looking forward to everything you're going to do because you're going to achieve a whole lot in your life. Yeah. Uh, truly you. inspiring story. Thank you so much for coming in today and sharing it with us. Uh, we wish you all the best. Can't wait to see what you do next. If you are struggling <laughs> or you know someone who is, please reach out to any of these services which are on screen now. Yeah, make sure you do. Amazing, Nina. Thanks so much.